right, welcome. Today we're going to be going over how I quickly painted the mounted Teutonic Knights for the Joan of Arc game. Um, we'll be talking about different levels or uh, um, how much detail to go into or you can go into. So I started off, I primed this model in just a, a gray because it is light. We don't, a black would be real difficult uh, to, to bring up to that lighter color. So what I do first is uh, the, the majority, the vast majority of these models have uh, a white cloth to it. Uh, so you could uh, easily just prime these in a white, uh, a bright white, and that would save uh, the step. Um, you could airbrush them, whatever, but I just wanted to show you how I went about this, just brushing it on just quickly. Um, I use Pro Acryl uh, Bull Titanium White here. has great coverage. don't have to go over it a whole bunch of times. And also, you know, think about this. It doesn't have to be this 100% perfect covered um, uh, model um, where it's cloth. There's a lot of folds. There's different dimension to it. And ultimately, we're going to be putting a light, uh, dark wash over this um, because, you know, these guys have been out in the countryside battling it up. And uh, so they're not going to be all nice and neat and clean and white. And uh, we're going to uh, kind of show that effect or give that effect by putting a wash over it. But I do want to just show you, you know, just going over the model. You see I use a larger brush. I think that's a size eight brush and you know just have you know a good amount of paint in it when uh you know i'm not worried about covering over something even though i will be using mostly um, uh, contrast paints or, or transparents um, you don't want to get too uh, you know sloppy or too wild um, over anything um, but you know you don't need to spend more than you know i think uh, i think when i was edit editing the video it was like four minutes that i took to paint this um, now that being said i kind of want to go back on what I, I said previously about priming priming it white if you do that the colors of the horse's uh, uh, fur and um the, the different the few different colors we use they will be you know pretty um, th they'll be a lot brighter um, or intense I guess would be uh, uh, the correct word so you see I'm just uh, kind of sped this up and uh, just uh, knocking out the um, all the cloth also the shield as well Now I want to cut in uh, a few of the silver or the armor parts. So um, his knee uh, down to his foot. Of course, his helmet's going to get covered. Um, on this one, there's not a whole lot of uh, metallics, but you just want to be nice and neat. Uh, I really like using the Pro Krill metallics or any uh, just regular brush on metallic paint for these small models. If you use, I like Vallejo Metal Color, um, which is an airbrush ready paint, but they're so thin, it's hard to uh, control in these smaller areas. Um, so uh, I like using something that is a, a little thicker um, to, uh, to be able to control the paint so that it doesn't run off, especially uh, being adjacent to uh, the light colors, the uh, the cloth colors. So just finishing up here on the helmet, uh, elbow armor, and uh, leg armor. Let's see, I guess the, some of the chain mail or the chest plate is, is visible as well. Now I did, it took me a while to figure out because uh, I was looking at all the models I had from the Joan of Arc Kickstarter and they, one of the stretch goals were uh, different sculpts for the mounted uh, Teutonic Knights. So 
I will be later going back and uh, they're, they're pretty nice. There's a lot more detail on those, so we'll, we'll get to those later. Next is painting the, uh, the fur, uh, the hide of the horse. And I believe the color I used here was Gorgonta fur. Uh, you could use, you know, a number of different colors to represent uh, the horse um, um, color. Or you may want to have different um, colors of horses, dark, uh, more red, more brown, whatever. Uh, if you um, are curious about other colors, I have some videos um, in the... Um, not in the Joan of Arc playlist, I don't believe, but uh, I did some... Lord of the Rings models, uh, the riders of Rohan, and did some a video just on the horses, and I think I did three or four different colors of horses. Besides the fur, I also got the, uh, there's a little bit of the saddle that was visible on both sides, so, <clears throat> excuse me, you wanna, uh, I got that, and again, that could be black, that could be any number of colors, but that's just easy going over that same one. Now going with the card art, this part of the bridal decorative part uh, was kind of, was yellow. So I used this uh, Iandin yellow contrast paint just to kind of uh, brush over it. Again, we want to be careful not to um, get onto any of the white of the, uh, the overcoat part for the horse there. And then we have the uh, Black Templar. Use this for the uh, uh, the hooves of the horse. Um, there's a um, the lance, um, the entire lance. I used just this black. Uh, the scabbard for the um, uh, sword on the other side. Of course, here we have. I, I go over the uh, the tail. With black Templar as well and this is nice it's just an easy way and you know to create the you know it's going to give you the highlights um, as well um, on this so it just kind of makes that a little easier and there we go this is the uh, the scabbard for the uh, for his sword go back after this part yep I realized that I forgot a few of the exposed areas of the horse so whatever color you use for the fur you want to go back and make sure you get the mounts his nose and uh, his little ears sticking out there there we go got all that covered and then, uh, while that was kind of drying, because I want this whole thing to, to be dry, um, I went over the base, and I'll put a link up in the uh, corner on how I do uh, the bases uh, for uh, my Joan of Arc models. And uh, that way, I, I just have a, a uniform way of going over those. Now, in the card art, there are several uh, uh, crosses on the model and so what I did I just used probably just the black Templar that I still had on the palette um, you know or if you're using black paint or whatever but uh, just go through here get a small brush with a fine point uh, or I guess it can be a large brush with a fine point uh, that being the important part and then uh, I just as you'll see here just kind of put a few few crosses on, uh, on the cloak. Now the thing is uh, because of the angle and the folds you know you just kind of have to think about it. I try to find areas that um, didn't have too deep of a fold like right here I, I put it above that that large fold at the bottom there so that it would just be easy and that's it it's just uh, that's probably your most simple freehand that you're gonna have two lines. Now, um, just to create, uh, uh, so that we can see all the detail of the sculpt and uh, create some shadows in there, I go over the entire model. 
uh, the base, everything with uh, Nuln Oil. And this is just, um, I don't mix it with anything. It's just, it's neat uh, as far as uh, the mixture. Go over the entire thing. Now, you wanna keep your brush constantly moving. You wanna have, um, at this point, you wanna have some liquid in the brush. Uh, you don't wanna be moving a dried brush over the model. Um, you start getting, um, I don't know, like sc not scratch marks, but the paint, just uh, brush marks in it. Now, here in a second, you're gonna see me, after I have the entire model covered, I will just wipe off any excess that I have on the brush um, right here. And you see, I'm just kind of um, moving, you know, any pulled up areas along that fold there. There's just way too much in here on that uh, with that yellow uh, um, decorative bridle, you know, is and then these folds just, you know, uh, wicking up, sucking up the, you know, where there's too much um, and just uh, uh, manipulating the wash you know if there's an area that needs you know a little more you put it on there and if not you know you, you know the, the wash is great it creates that shadow but you know you don't need these shafts to be so deep um, especially on a small on, on these small models so just go over the entire model and, and uh, get that now comes uh, probably the most time intensive Part. And this just uh, bringing up um, not only highlights, uh, but just, you know, I don't know, freshening up all the white cloth um, on this model because it is so prominent. You know, it's the vast majority of this model is white. So what I've done is just going back with the white that I used, the bull titanium white, and it's thinned down. I probably used, I believe I used... Uh, maybe some uh, Lamian medium or glazing medium that you may have and uh, just you know so that it's um, thin down enough uh, maybe a heavy glaze um, I remember when I started painting years ago and you know you'd paint something in this case white and then you put a black wash over it and then you go back over so much of it and it just seems counterproductive uh, it, it wasn't intuitive to me on what was going on, but what you're doing is, uh, in, is trying to, um, you know, just bring out the actual color. Um, you'll see I'll spend, uh, I say spend more time, but I'll go over it two or three or maybe even four times because the, this white is so transparent. These, uh, the high creases, the high parts of the, uh, the cloth here. Um, I especially spend time around the crosses so that it's brighter around it so that the the black cross will stand out. You know, that's, you know, there's just a few features here. So, you know, you can spend, you know, as long as you desire on this. You can, um, you know, you could have stopped one step prior and, you know, get through your models. Again, I like you know, getting all my models, you know, 100% covered with paint, you know, maybe that black wash on that and then get them on the tabletop. And those that are victorious or those that are triumphant in battle, those are the ones that I go back and like do a lot of cool highlights on. And uh, just, again, uh, it encourages me to keep painting on my models, to keep improving them. Uh, but it also doesn't bog me down thinking well all my models have to be you know perfect before i can you know get them on the tabletop now i uh i don't just paint i like to play these games and so i figure out how is the quickest way i can get some good looking painted models onto the tabletop and then you know i i can always go back you can you know this is paint you can always go back and add more even if you varnish these i don't varnish my models i don't handle them enough uh, to, for them to for me to think that the paint's going to wear off or or whatever but uh, i just i like going back and you know adding highlights honestly on these models all i did was the white highlights but 
once they get on the tabletop and they uh, they go through and they, they do something cool in the game, I can go back and highlight the horse, the lance, you know, the yellow uh, bridle, you know, decorative part. You know, all these things can be highlighted later. Um, you're not limited. You're not required by any rules or anything that it has to be done before you play it. Uh, get those thoughts out of your out of your mind. That's just going to slow you down from having fun. All right. So you see, I'm just I'm going back around, working around the model, uh, hitting these high points. Um, you know, multiple times if need be. You know, just build, you know, especially with this white, really building, building up. And there's point, you know, uh, some of the, the high sharp points you could go back with. Um, not so much of a glaze, just go back with the, the pure white, you know, and you can hit it, you know, one time and, and kind of get it. but. Again, I like spending time just highlighting these, you know, just glazing it up, you know, watching it, you know, slowly develop, um, kind of find cool, you know, areas that, you know, well, this would be darker, this would be lighter and just kind of um, hanging out. And there's times that, man, I just want to knock these models out and get them off the table and uh, <laughs> go on to paint something else. So here we go. The, here's a couple of finished models. Uh, you can see it kind of finished uh, the, the basing there and I need to clean off my photo area. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you. I hope it motivates you to paint your models. If you have any questions, leave it down in the comments. You can reach me on uh, Facebook or Instagram at Smooth Blend Studio. And I hope you have a great time painting your models. Thank you.